Radio. Welcome to Working the Web to Win. I'm your co-host, Carl Weiss. With me is Hector the Connector Cisneros. This is our first uh, actual show of the year 2014. So hopefully this will be a much greater and better year than last year. Um, before we get deep into the show, should I just give the call-in number? So you could do that in case you want to join the conversation. Uh, for those out there in Cyber World, the call-in number is 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Three eight zero eight, and of course you can always find us on all our websites, especially workingthewebtowin.com. Yeah, in fact, if you definitely want to f- check us out on that, because that has connections to everything else, including our YouTube channel, because we're also uh, you know recording this live, and it'll be on uh, YouTube within forty eight hours. Yeah, and of course you will find our sponsors on there. That's right. You have VE and Tub King, uh, and they have specials on there. So if you click on their ad, of course you can take advantage of those opportunities. That's so, right. So let's get started with today's episode. What we called this episode was putting your best bot forward, and we uh, called it that because recently, in fact, it was uh, d- just before Christmas, right. DARPA had a, a robotics challenge where they actually had 16 teams from all around the world competing, and uh, they've actually knocked the uh, half of the competitors out. So when they have the finals, which is going to be in about a year, they're going to get it down to like the last eight. Right. So we're going to talk about the ones that, that you know really excelled at this program. We're going to talk about what the uh, this technology represents and where it's heading. Well, I think one of the, the most exciting things about it, when I was looking at all my research, there's lots of really cool advancements that are very recent, within the last year mm-hmm. or so. So they're really starting to nail down the balance of the robots where they can actually act like humans they can walk, oh, yeah. run and so on these are not and your daddy's droids these right. things are like out of Star Wars and they again walk, even climb. Like, like the Honda robot which wasn't in the contest right. uh, possible they've upgraded that yeah. robot I don't know a dozen times three dozen times it's the same robot right. but they keep upgrading it and now that you could see it running and doing all kinds of really cool stuff mm-hmm. so um, I, I did my research was you know, we always do our research independent of each other right and one of the things that I always noticed was what other things that are going on in the robot world that wasn't part of the DARPA contest? Because the DARPA contest by itself is pretty cool. Yeah, well, actually, let's let's talk about that after the fact. Okay. Let's talk about the DARPA contest. Because the DARPA contest was kind of unique because it's kind of almost like one of the uh, X Games, you know? Yeah. It, it's more or less the Robotics Olympics. You know, and Pretty much the Robotics Olympics. Yeah, right? and, and believe me when I tell you that there were some people... Maybe not Olympic athletes, but us who right. would have trouble competing with some of these robots. Right. I mean, they had to do quite a lot. They had to be able to drive a vehicle. In fact, let me, let me pull up my little graphic here, which talks about some of the, the tasks that they had to perform. They had to be able to climb a ladder. They had to be able to open a series of doors, remove debris from a doorway, walk across rough terrain. Right. They, of course, had to drive to the you know accident the site, the location. They had to locate and close leaking valves, open water valves, man a hose, and cut through a wall. Yeah, And all of these things are because this contest is really about getting robots that can rescue people. Mm-hmm. That's what the whole, whole idea right. is. So we have, it was really sort of prompted by the big accident they had in Japan a couple of years Fukushima, ago. Fukushima, right. right? Yeah. Because again, people couldn't get in there. Right because of all the radiation and the robots that they had at the time right. couldn't get in there either. Well, <laughs> and, and, and right, like I said, we'll, we'll show you some of the footage from the show because right now I've got on my screen how some of these things look and, and uh, they may be bipedal but they don't exactly look like uh, what yeah. you'd see on Star Wars. They don't I even mean, look like Robbie. No, I think, yeah, they're, they're more like <laughs> Tinker Toys on steroids right. but, but they can do a lot of very advanced things and they were meant to be autonomous so this isn't something where you have to have like you know you've seen in fact I've got some of those two in my little collection here some of the uh, uh, bomb squad droids that they've been using right. in Iraq in Afghanistan well I mean those are articulated but they they roll like a little tank and they're and they're tele- right. they're operated by telepresence which means you actually have to have an operator right. somebody driving over there them. with a joystick make right. it run around and and operate its little you know articulated hand and all that where, where these they realize from the get-go that you're not going to have that opportunity for right. several reasons because right. first of all let's say you, we are putting them in a high radiation area. Right, well, the radios don't work. Right. You're not going to be able to get a good radi- radio signal. Plus, you, you know, can you imagine trying to get them to climb up a ladder where you'd have to look and, you know, they would take right. them a day and a half just to climb right. up the stupid ladder. By then, the darn thing would melt down. Right. You know, and I can see a time in the not too distant future, once they perfect this technology, where it's not so much that they're going to replace firefighters, but there'll be some places where, believe me, right. you're not going to want to send a human being. 
Yeah, you don't have Spider-Man, so we got to well, send in the robot. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> if you'll notice, with even with the the you know the robotics uh, droids that go in and help to defuse bombs, a lot of times the, the way they defuse those bombs is by setting them off. Right, they they, they <laughs> sacrifice themselves. <laughs> right, so you can do that with you know with a bot that you're not going to want to do that with a human being. So like I said, it, it's definitely going to be something where once the technology gets perfected, that. Uh, you'll be able to do a lot of really interesting things and, and be able to help people out. Remember when they had the Haiti earthquake and things right. like that? Well, you know, trying to go in and find some of these people, the survivors that are in Under the rubble. the rubble, right. right. Under the rubble, it's like next to impossible after that. I mean, by the time you do get to them, they're croaked. Right. Yeah, right. or, or you're, you know, you're, you're too afraid of going in because you bring the building down on right. top of the rescuers as well. Where at least with the, the, the bots, you know, you don't have to worry about they get If they get slammed, that's just, you know... Well, that was one of the things I was block. looking at. When I was doing my research, I'd find... Robo snake and robo dog and robo yeah, well, bug. Yeah, we're talking about that, but like but I said, let's when you're talking about yeah. that, one of the things they're not in the DARPA contest, but right. the robo snake right. is being used already That's right. to get in through the rubble yep. to find the people with the flash because it's got a flashlight for heads, so right? And go through and find yeah. it that way. So that's sort of a cool thing. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that too. But let me let me roll some of the footage here because this is actually some of the footage. Because the thing is, if you missed the competition. That you happened the last week. Yeah, you, you can see it on, on the replay. And, of course, you can go to the blog and get to the connection for and that. good day to you, and welcome the, the to link is in the, in the article Speedway, itself. Once again of the DARPA Robotics Challenge. Yeah, this was all done in Miami Speedway. Yeah. So, you know, and they had some they had some of the people that were involved and some of the robots that were involved. And they, they got the whole show, so you could see the whole program on there. And of course, if you go to the blog, you can see it. The, the, the link is there where they can get to that. Yeah. You know, I remember we did a show last year on robotics, and we mm -hmm. talked about some of the. And there was actually a TV show where people were controlling remote robots to fight with each other. That's right. Sort of like the old. I forget what it was the toy we used to get at Christmas where the Rock'em Sock'em yeah, rock robot. sock'em robots. Yeah. Well, sort of like that, but big Rock'em Sock'em robots. Yeah. Well, and they've also got the little ones that that play uh, soccer, the right. soccer bots, and those those are autonomous. Right. Uh, but but like I said, the thing is, is most of the ones that w we've kind of gotten used to are, are more or less along the lines which you would call a toy. Right. All right. The, these are robots that are meant to do some very specific things in an environment that is not, by no means a game. Right. You know. And yeah. and like I said, we've actually the, the one that took first place was actually one that was a Japanese it's called creation. The shaft. Right. The red one. That's right. That one looks like there was something out of one of the science fiction horror movies. Yeah, I, I, I'm chasing you. Yeah, you know, exactly. This isn't something that you'd want to see in, in, in your <laughs> nightmares, right? Because it was kind of scary looking. It, it, more, it didn't look more like a human being. It looked more like, to me, I, I said it looked like a boombox on steroids. Right. There was a movie, I remember one time, where these guys were stationed around Jupiter. And this robot, who was supposed to be the helping robot, started right. going after him because he wanted to be with the guy's wife or oh. something. This one reminds me of that one a little bit. What was really interesting about this one took first place by a bunch of points, and then immediately Google bought them? Well, actually, Google not only bought them, they also bought uh, Boston Robotics, makers okay. of, of some of not only the bots that were in here, but you've heard of Big Dog, and we're right. talking about that. Uh, so, obviously, Google realizes that robotics is going to be very prominent in the not-too-distant future. They want to be iRobot. You know, they want to be U.S. Robotics. It. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can't beat them, buy them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it works the same for them. But they, uh, like, in here they actually had some of the people that were on board so with... We received with our this atlas one. in August of this year, and we received it as the result of finishing in the, uh, in the top of and the as you can virtual see. robotics yeah. challenge that, that crazy took place looking last thing. fall up into this summer. Our DARPA Robotics Challenge team has been coming and going. We do they always got some really cool stuff. And again, uh, this is that. not the whole show because it would take 12 oh, hours. No, this is actually before the actual competition. This was actually when they unboxed the, the bot and, you know, w some of the things that they, they were doing with their their simulated environment, getting ready for the actual show. And, and the Atlas came in number two with seven points behind right. Shaft. So close. Well, and again, this is the semis, so... They're going to learn a lot from each other, so when they have the final, it's going to be interesting to see the finals. See if they can upgrade them, and then one will beat the other. That'd be sort of cool. Well, the the whole point is again, it's just like with the uh, you know the other robotics that we've gotten used to, like the aerial drones and things like that. I mean, a lot of them when they started, they were hardly noteworthy. They were crashing more than flying, and they've come a long way. Because like when you're watching it here, this is about the gait that these things walk. You know, so they're not exactly moving in what you would call. Lightning speed, right? But again, if you saw Osimo, Osimo actually—we're going to have that because actually I've got some footage from Osimo. 
Well, the thing, and that, which is really kind of interesting, because I was surprised that, that the Honda wasn't in on this, because their, their yeah. robot is really cutting edge. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, that's one of the ones we're going to talk about. Maybe bit. they figured that they would win it by so many points that they didn't want to embarrass everybody or something. <laughs> I don't know. Most of these guys are not, in the, they're not afraid of embarrassing the other guys, because, in fact, I have the, the Osmo right here. And if you look at the Osmo, what's interesting about it is that it's, um, it's also a bipedal robot. Yeah. But what's interesting, I'll go to the home page on it. I mean, it is an amazing thing. Yeah, it can run. It can. It, it can. Oh, the way it runs is sort of weird, but it runs. But it can actually jump sideways, crab left and right. My website. Everything you wanted to know about me is located right. Yeah, and I mean, it'll it'll walk between. What's really interesting is watching it go up the flight of stairs. Right. I mean, it goes up like a real human being. Its its balance is just incredible. And it actually has. Um, a Facial recognition built in. Mm -hmm. It's got a whole bunch of other. Sure does. Really cool type of things. So, I think the Japanese are just a little bit ahead of the curve right now because again, they started building Asimo 10, 12 years ago. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's been through many, many upgrades. Um, I noticed that the NASA one, which I thought was going to, because we were talking about this right. before the thing, we yeah. thought the Valkyrie was going to take, you know, I mean, when you look take at the names. points standing, it got zero. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. It didn't get off the bus, apparently. Maybe it, it like, had a major meltdown or something. Well, again, that's, you know, this technology. When you're looking at something this sophisticated, because you have to realize how sophisticated these things are. I mean, they, like when you look at them, they look like Tinker Toys. But right. when you realize what they were designed to do, it's pretty incredible because they're raising the bar on a number of different levels. Right. And they have to be able to do it on their own. Yeah, I noticed that Robo Simeon only did like 14 points. And I was wondering, that was another NASA jet propulsion mm -hmm. one. And for some reason, that one didn't do as well. Well, again, though, when, when you look at how they did it, they're still in the running. Okay, Robo, and Robo Simeon was really a, a strange-looking cooter when you look at it. I mean, it's, it's really a bizarre looking. Yeah, it looks like um, one of those things out of like, uh, not Star Trek, but I was going to say... Uh, Star Wars? No. SG9 or something, you know, <laughs> one of them weirdo looking things. But again, I, that brings me back to where I was saying when I was doing the research. I mean, people are going to say, well, what's, what's important about this to me? Well, the reality is there's a lot of things that are really important about all this robotic technology. Right. All the advances in prosthetics and all this kind of stuff come directly out of this. That's right. Um, a lot of the advances in the construction and manufacturing of these robots. I showed you the uh, insect, the... The spider, that was totally printed with 3D printers, mm -hmm. and it looks and acts just like a spider. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll bring yeah. that one up, too, in a little bit. I just wanted to show them some of the things. Cause the, the point was, is, is that by putting out a $2 million prize... You get people interested yeah. to go and figure out how to do this stuff. That's right, and that's that's what it takes, you know. And again, if they can make a robot's arm articulate and grab and can pick up an egg without breaking it all, guess what? That translates directly into mm -hmm. somebody who lost their arm mm -hmm. over in Afghanistan or something where they can replace it and do the same kind of thing. So these things have far-reaching uh, implications, implications mm -hmm. that you normally would not think about. But, but the thing is, like when you look at some of these, like remember Big Dog, we were yeah. talking about it, and then and then the other one was Wildcat. You know, I got a little video on Wildcat. Yeah. And that one's sort of weird because again, that's a gas-powered one. But you can hear it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> but it really runs. I mean, yeah, this, this thing does like 16 miles an hour. You you would not be able to outrun it for very for very long. Again, that one looks like something out of one of the the science fiction movies where, you know, you got Robo uh, Mule or something. But again, these a lot of these are becoming autonomous, and that's that's one of the big jumps. We've okay. had a lot of kinds of robots where you program it and the arm comes out, and mm -hmm. I mean, half our automobiles are built by robots today. Oh yeah, well, and, and now see a lot of the because you know you're used to having the industrial robots. Right. One of the ones I put on here was Baxter. Have you ever seen Baxter? I haven't seen Baxter. Baxter is interesting because Baxter is an industrial robot, but it's an industrial robot that does things a little bit differently. It's got fake eyes. Well, it does. <laughs> and and it's a fa in fact, what makes it interesting, I'll, let, me, let me queue up a video for you. Because Baxter, like most of your industrial robots, they put them inside these big cages because if they swung, it would take your head clean off. Well, the way Baxter works is he's actually designed to work right next to you. And uh, let me queue up one of his things. Here he is packing some some toys or something in a box. But what do you see this? Because it's very interesting. He can work up close and personal because he actually has a camera up there. So and he'll look around. You'll see he him when he's packing you. the boxes. And, and you can actually, it, to actually to, to program him, it's not so much programming. You actually get up there and you show him 
how to how to manipulate whatever That's you're trying really to do. Cool. But watch, you can see his little eyes move and you see his head moves. So he's actually looking around. So if you happen to come up behind him and he swung, he would stop. He's not going to go clang, you know, and knock you into so the. Let's see if his background. head swings and his head swings back around yeah. before he brings it around. You can see a little camera up top there. Right. And again, he's got it. It's really sort of funny. He's like I got a laptop on his head with with pictures, you know. But yeah. the camera's right above that. Right. But like I said, it, it definitely is is a, a, a droid that is going to take you know processing to the next level because this is something that can work right next to you. Yeah. And, and and he's only twenty grand. He's only twenty thousand dollars. So when you think about the sophistication of these things, and that again, and the cost. When I was talking about the implications yeah. for humans, mm -hmm. you know, one of the implications is is if you're a low low income worker right if you're a worker who does not high skilled right guess what robots like baxter may be replacing you here in the near future yeah. and that's that's an issue people have to understand that the, the people who don't know anything they're going to be the ones out of jobs you know because if a person can spend 20 grand on a robot right and that's it and that robot's good for like five or six years that's a heck of a lot cheaper than paying somebody for five or six years. Absolutely. And they, I'm, I can see people saying, hey, we need to get, you know, a, a raise because a robot just replaced us or whatever. Or you'll walk into Walmart and there'll be a, a greeter robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Baxter could do that right now if he really wanted to. It yeah. wouldn't be that hard. So, these again, they have far-reaching implications. I think there's the, the immediate implication is for people who have handicaps like lost legs, lost limbs, mm -hmm. lost arms... Um, in the not too vis distant future, even vision, because if you're blind and the, the computer can actually see what it needs to see, it can talk to you now mm -hmm. and tell you what to do. You need to move your foot left or right or whatever. There's an object on your right, move to your left. <laughs> I can see that happening in, the, in a very short period of time. Um, why don't you run down the stats of, of the contest? Who went first, second, and third, and fourth? And so on. Okay, well, actually, that was on the main homepage. Let me go back to that. Well, it's on the blog, so I got it up on the screen here, too. Um, so we know Shaft took first with 27 points. Mm -hmm. And then Team IHMC Robotics, which is from uh, Florida Institute of, for Human Machines and Cognition, they took 20 points. Where are they located? Is that in Tallahassee? I believe so. I think it's in Tallahassee, Florida. Then Team Tartan Rescue, which is Carnegie Mellon mm -hmm. University, and the National Robotics Engineering Center, they took 18 points. MIT, Team MIT took 16 points. Then Team Robo Simeon, which is the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory one, took 14 points. And then Team uh, Track Labs, which I'm not sure where they are, they were 11 points. And then Team WRECS, which is uh, Rossiter Polytechnical Institute, so they had 11 points. So those are, those are the finalists, if I'm right. understanding right. Uh, and they were going to do the second level of the contest when? Uh, they said it's going to be anywhere from 12 to 18 months. They haven't set the exact date yet. So they got plenty of time for upgrades. Right. So and, and this going to happen. They're, you're going to see them because, like I said, what they've learned from this particular competition was from each other. So you're going to see a lot of, of what one robot was doing being but replicated by you can't by have any new entries, though. No. No, in fact, they've, it, basically it's an elimination process. I think when they first started, there were almost 60 teams and then wow. they got it down to 16 for this competition and the next one you got the final eight and then for the final eight will they do another four no the final eight that's it that's, that's it and they're going to choose the winner and, and so hand the out two million the, the bucks million is going, going to somebody in this this first eight. Yeah. you know i was when i was thinking about this i was thinking about the x project you know the the mission into space mm -hmm. to get the first commercial spaceship up there mm -hmm. which i forgot how many millions of dollars it was for that project but again i mean if you want people to be able to come up with a vendor, there's nothing like putting a prize. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, in fact, this, uh, speaking about NASA, I've got their Valkyrie on the screen here, but they uh, they actually have a robot in space. You heard of of uh, Robonaut, right? Right. And he's uh, actually on the ISS, and he's up there to assist the uh, astronauts. And th when they first brought him up there, he only, it was only the torso, <laughs> but had the you know arms and 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 the you know the head and everything. But uh, I understand that they're they've given him legs now too. So this is pretty much uh, the fact that the Valkyrie is is more or less an outgrowth of the Robonaut concept. And what does the Robonaut con? What does he do on the space and the space station? He just like his job is to turn that knob left or right or what? 
Well, again, they're, they're still experimenting with him. He doesn't have any specific tasks because, again, he's, he's a type of robot that can be operated by telepresence. So, you know, the problem with, remember when they, they almost drowned the, uh, the Italian astronaut not too many months ago? So every time you send these astronauts out into space, you're, it's, it's a life-threatening situation. Sure, they're, they're not know. on Earth. <laughs> so if they can use the robot to do a lot of these tasks where they don't have to put an astronaut's life on the line, plus it takes those guys like four hours just to get into their suit. So right. it's a long process. Well, and then they can only stay out there so long because after a while, you know, just the, the suits are very bulky. They're not very comfortable. So you can only you can only handle being in those things so long. With the robot, he can stay out there all day, all night. Yeah, he doesn't him, complain. You can put him out the airlock, and he won't die. You don't have you don't have to worry about paying him out. overtime or anything. That means I'm elk. I can see that happening. So, um, I know uh, if you go to the blog, uh, there's the no the show notes page. So you've been hearing us talking about these different pictures that you see. You can actually click on any of the show notes page and you can get to a lot of this stuff and you'll actually see lots and lots of videos. Yeah. And now we can talk about some of the, the cool ones that were out there because there, there are several of them that I've seen that I, I thought were really interesting. In fact, let me show you this one. This, this one, if you don't like snakes, you're not going to want to watch this video, by the way. Yeah, speaking of AI. Here's the snake bot. You ever see this one? Yeah, I actually saw a picture of it where they were using it yeah. to climb through the rubble. Oh, yeah, and I've seen it. If you throw it and it, it grabs a pole, it'll wrap around a pole and then slither up the pole. So, I mean, you can really do some pretty scary things. And, again, this one doesn't have any skin on it. A lot of these robots, you can get them and then skin them, and that is put a skin on them. Right. And then they look like the real thing. So some of this is an outgrowth from the movie-making industry because they've been making robots for different kinds of stuff like that. I'm trying to find a little spider bot one you had. That was a pretty spooky one, too. There's a spider one. Um, the guy, uh, what's his name from the TV series? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I didn't get his... I don't have the video here. I'll find it. Yeah, but that, that was pretty interesting, too, because I mean, it's a, 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 a realistic acting spider because it had, like, three motors in each leg. Is it three motors in each leg, so the spider can actually act like it's getting ready to pounce. He can go down. He can, he can crab left and right. <laughs> he, can, he can poise up, poise down. Um, and he walks like a spider, so the legs work independently of each other, which is the way spiders normally walk. Um, and it's pretty big. The interesting thing I thought about it, the whole spider was built from their 3D printer. So they, they 3D printed all the parts and then assembled them. There you go, the awesome spider. That's the one. Yeah. Here's another one that'll creep you out. And it's really creepy because it looks and it's got this big blue eye. There is, there's the spider itself. Right. So those of you who are listening to the radio show now also know that this will be turned into a, a, a web TV show and you'll be able to go on and see it probably Friday or Saturday maybe and see the actual video footage of these animals, and, or I should say robots. They look like this one. The, the spider looks exactly like a spider. Acts like a spider, crawls around like a spider. That means like this big. And, <laughs> and again, <laughs> I'm sure that's coming. This is better. They put some silly string in it. Yeah. I mean, when you see it, and this is a skinless spider, so that is, it's, it's just the printed circuit stuff. But it acts and looks and feels, and it's really, really sort of creepy. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, anyway, the spider was a neat thing. I think, again, when we was talking about the robo snake and all those kinds of stuff, it's going to be a big deal for the movie because, oh, yeah. again, this can add a huge amount of realism to oh, movies yeah. that they're making because you can only do so much with CGI. Right. But this ain't CGI. It looks pretty real. Last one. Blasphemy, huh? You want to see the, the swarm robots? Those are And the swarm robots are pretty cool. Let me pop that one up for you. We developed a nano quadrator capable of agile flight. I'll move it up. And the, the swarm robots, one of the things that was neat about the swarm, swarm robots is that the swarm robots could actually, they had multiple kinds. They had to have yeah. ones that fly, fly as a but they also had ones that crawl. Yeah, but they had ones too that they fly in formation. Yeah. And there were more of them and more of them. In fact, you know, I don't know if I trust anything that swarms because what happens if, look at that, what happens if you get those guys mad at you? Yeah, you never know, they might come at you. Uh, 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 speaking of which, I think here comes one now. Got yeah, your fly swatter? Let's see if I can take my eye out here. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> I should have brought my slingshot. Here, I'll get him. I don't know, man. We don't want to get him upset. The team can also navigate <laughs> environments with obstacles. And the, look out. Oh. <laughs> and the swarm robots that they were the flying ones, they could actually fly them in formation, fly them around obstacles. They even did a flying figure eight pattern where they're missing each other. The other one that I thought was neat about the swarm robots, they had these ones that could crawl. So if you had a child that was in a radioactive room or something, they were down. The, the swarm robots crawl up to them, grab them, and drag them out of the room. But it might be like three dozen of these little robots grabbing on and pulling them out. That was pretty wild. And again, they can see that video on the on the by going to the blog and hey, things are gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Leave it there. <laughs> don't let it get back up. Don't let it get back up. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Oh. <laughs> so we have a, a couple minutes left in the show. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, thank our sponsors for helping us bring uh, all this cool news to everybody. We want to thank uh, VE Cigarettes. Again, you can go to workingthewebtowin.com and see the ad there. And and there'll be a new ad coming out actually so that'll be really cool when you see that and of course tub king and uh senior bathtub where you can get uh the best really cool looking bathtubs or senior bathtubs that's right and you can also pick up our you know this episode will be up in about uh what two days yeah and again the video we actually put on the work in the web the yeah that's the difference right. between watching and listening i mean if yeah. you like to listen fine but if you actually go to the the web tv show which is on youtube then you'll actually be able to see a lot of the video we're right. talking about so here. if you're like me and you like to podcast stuff and listen to it while you drive around in your car download the radio show if you want to see it go to the website and you can really see all the stuff on. so that's about all we have for today's show i believe we might be getting invaded again by the advance attacking uh robot. you took my finger off no the swarm bot's coming back again. We just want to tell everybody, keep working the web to win, guys. See you later if these things don't kill us. Hey, that's the best I've ever flown at.